You're watching the TV Food Network. Hi, I'm Andy Mill. Competing in the Olympics is one of the great moments of my life. While I'm no longer racing, I still love to ski and hike and cycle and basically getting out and staying active. It's how I live. My family and my work are really important, but so is adventure, fitness, sports, and diet. And combined, that's the fountain of youth. Now there's a magazine called Men's Journal that shares my approach to life. Men's Journal captures everything I'm into, like sports, weekend trips, great health and fitness tips, and exercise programs. Men's Journal covers skiing in the Rockies, diving in the Caribbean, hiking in Alaska, plus important information to help improve your health and your love life. Subscribe now to Men's Journal for only $11.97 and get this 200-page equipment guide absolutely free. Call 800-459-1818. That's 800-459-1818. Men's Journal is not just another magazine. It's a way of life. Today on TV Diners, we'll find out what makes no place in Dallas a popular restaurant with no phone. We'll taste some Pacific Rim cuisine at Avalon's on Maui. And we'll drive to Boston's biggest steakhouse, Hilltops on Route 1. Well, hi. Welcome to today's TV Diners. I'm Bill Pons. As always, good to be with you. And I'm Nina Griscom. And as always, it's good to be with you. Nina, spring <laughs> is in the air here. I don't know. Maybe you know, I'm in the air. I don't know what. Spring is today. <laughs> Thank you. Well, if you thought Mexican cuisine was only about heavy fried foods and lots of cheese, you've been eating in all the wrong places. At no place in Dallas, Texas, native restaurateur Matt Martinez serves prairie-style cuisine, a Tex-Mex combo that's characterized by the freshest ingredients, very few sauces, and bold flavors. The only problem is finding the place. <laughs> There's no sign at no place, so look for the brightly colored western mural, which is on the side. I like that. That, you know, for a while was a trend in certain restaurants to have no sign on the door, no address, nothing. It was kind of considered very cool if, if it had no name and no address this, to this it. This is literally no place. The, we we have a phone number at the, at the end of the, the thing here, but it's of the restaurant next door, which they also own. They serve prairie food here. Now, Bill, can you tell Well, prairie how? food is basically hand-me-down cooking techniques uh, associated with the, te the Texas prairie. Flat grill cooking, black iron skillet cooking. They don't use a lot of fat. You won't find refried beans here. Uh, so the flavor then is not so much from the butter and the fat and all that. It's from, more from the herbs. From and, the ingredients. Yeah. There's an interesting history to this restaurant. Matt, whom I'm sure we'll see in the video, at least I hope we'll see him, his grandfather opened the very first Tex-Mex restaurant uh, in, in, in uh, Austin, Texas. Didn't he fight with Pancho Villa? Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. And, he was, uh, and he was a rebel with Pancho Villa uh, coming from Mexico. Matt himself was a personal caterer to Lyndon Johnson for Tex-Mex food. Holds. A lot of people think there's similarities, right? Pancho Villa and Lyndon Johnson. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. He also holds a record for making the world's largest enchilada, more than 100 yards long. So You're kidding me. I, I think I had that down here. Who would order a 100-yard enchilada? I guess two football teams that were hungry after a game. Woo. You're right. That'd be about it. So the, anyway, so the place we're about to visit has some interesting things. They've got a queso with wild boar sausage, cowboy beans, creek bottom shrimp. What we're going to see here is yet another example of regional American food. And this mm -hmm. one re reviewer said, this is the most authentic Texas food you can find. So let's take a look at it. There's plenty of great Tex-Mex food to be had in Dallas, but true believers say there's no place quite like Matt Martinez's No Place. You won't find a sign in front of this humble-looking restaurant, and there's no phone number either. But if you follow the savory smell of fresh grilled fish and vegetables, you're sure to find your way to the best prairie-style Tex-Mex in town. No Place is the pride of fourth-generation restaurateur Matt Martinez, who turned what was formerly a 7-Eleven convenience store into a home for all sorts of cowboy keech. PC or not, these antlers make a great place to hang your hat. Despite its lack of advertising, No Place has no lack of business. Matt credits some of his success to the nation's current infatuation with Mexican cuisine. Mexican food is the hottest growing ethnic food in the United States, and Tex-Mex is by far the most popular. Yeah, the tequila, you know, is the number one spirit now in the United States as far as liquor. Uh, ketchup was overcome by hot sauce as a condiment. And, you know, it just keeps going on and on and on. At no place, you'll get Tex-Mex with a twist. The restaurant is known for its prairie-style cooking, which means they use less fat than traditional Mexican cuisine and practically no sauces, save Matt's own namesake brand, a secret seasoning that Matt calls black magic, coats most of the meat and fish served up at no place. 
The grill is the center of activity in this kitchen, and on it you'll find fresh shrimp and catfish, ready to be plated with the restaurant's signature wild rice and plump portobello mushrooms. If a diner specifies that he wants his dish creek bottom style, he'll also get a hefty helping of grilled peppers and onions. Here, the cook swirls a plate of peppery melted cheese, which will become an appetizer-sized queso, with shredded wild boar meat and a dollop of sour goosey. Matt's steaks are a main course must, served with a light cornbread cake. The no-fuss flavor-intensive style of his cooking has garnered national recognition. Even Julia Child stopped by for a queso and one of Matt's luscious desserts, like this towering chocolate custard-filled shortcake and coffee almond flan dripping with caramel. Despite its critical acclaim, no place is still known as one of the best kept secrets in town. Book your table before there's a stampede to this Lone Star original. Great place. I really like the look of that food. Uh, you can almost see the guys out at rent. Maybe I'm, you know, reading something into this here. But you You're can almost see the guys again. around. I'm losing. I had too much tequila, right? Um, you can almost see the guys around the campfire making yep. that stuff. Well, Bill, we've talked so many times about re various regional foods in America, yep. and they've all been interesting. We've all seen different influences, but this, to me, is one of the regional cuisines that really smacks of all American. Uh, yes, you have the Texican, uh, excuse me, the Mexican right. influence on it, but it's a lot of real American influence that, as you said, people probably invented when they're out there for long days on the trail or out on the range. Yeah, I, I think the germinating essence of this food is what you could cook when you weren't in a kitchen, That's probably. Right. Over would be a campfire. The thing. And also, isn't it interesting to think how, you know, there is a more commercialized brands of Mexican food make you think of the refried beans right. and all that uh, guacamole and, and the heavy cheese on the stuff. But the authentic food is more like we've just seen That's here. That's right. And you know, of course, Frontera, which was one of the original restaurants we did in mm -hmm. Chicago when we first started the show, um, he was one of the first chefs to really travel all throughout Mexico and, and show the American public what real Mexican food is, regional Mexican food. Yeah, what, so, so for the first time, I actually make a note on TV diners, the food we have seen here actually is labeled by the restaurant itself as prairie food. First time we've done it. Yeah, well, it looks, it looks very good. I'd like to try it. If you're looking for no place, but a good place to eat, try no place. 6310 La Vista Drive in Dallas, Texas. They're at 214-823-9077. They're closed Sunday and Monday, and no place takes credit cards. The average price of a meal here is about $27. And the things you might want to try are the New York strip steak, believe it or not, and quail, grilled quail, or the creek bottom shrimp. I want to try some of Matt's secret sauce, a very dark That'd looking look good. Sauce. I bet you could call up and order that. Uh, probably is available. When we return, we'll get a taste of Pacific Rim at Avalon in Maui. If you love cookbooks, now's your chance to vote for your favorite and win some great prizes, too. Be a part of the Julia Child Cookbook Awards, the most prestigious prize in cookbook publishing. You can help select the winner of the Cook's Choice Award. Here's how to enter. Just stop into your local bookstore and pick up an official ballot. Or call 1-502-587-7953 and we'll send you one. Then select your favorite cookbook from the nominees, and you'll be eligible to win an exciting vacation to San Antonio, plus this fabulous merchandise. Bolia Vineyards Wine, a Bartoli olive oil gift basket, a Sever magazine subscription, and Thermidor cooking apparel. All entries must be received by March 26th. The winner of the Cook's Choice Prize will be announced March 28th. And stay tuned to the TV Food Network for more information on the winners. The Cook's Choice Award. Vote for your favorite cookbook and win. Honey, if you'll put a new roof on the house, I'll make you a bagel. A bagel? Just for putting on a roof? Can a bagel be rewarding? It can if it's got Smucker's Simply Fruit spread on top. Nothing but pure fruit, naturally fat-free, with a fresh, sweet taste only Smucker's captures. It makes everything more fulfilling. A bagel, just for putting on a roof. Smucker's makes it special, because with a name like Smucker's, it has to be good. We're the scrubbing bubble in the new trigger sprayer. Oh, yeah, he's our new trigger sprayer. There's only one trigger that gives you scrubbing bubbles. Dow's new trigger sprayer. It has us foaming and clinging instead of running like other triggers, easily removing dirt and soap scum. Dow bathroom cleaner's new trigger sprayer. The only trigger with scrubbing bubbles. We work hard so you don't have to. 
Tim Conway's back, and he's hauling in a whopper. It's Dork Goes Fishing, this year's funniest comedy home video. Let Tim Conway as that master sportsman dork show you everything you've always wanted to know about fishing. Go back in time to man's first fishing method. Let Dorf show you what to wear, how to clean your day's catch, how to get in shape, the joys of fishing with your spouse. What are you waiting for? Call and order Dorf Goes Fishing today. Hi, welcome back. Well, Chef Mark Elman began his culinary career flipping burgers in L.A., but he's come a long way now, a long way from L.A., too. At Avalon, his acclaimed restaurant in Maui, Elman has redefined Hawaiian regional cuisine with his bold use of Asian spice and California style. The future of Pacific Rim cookery begins right here. And in fact, he's one of 12 chefs that has sort of made a, uh, a group of people focusing on Hawaiian regional cuisine, Pacific Rim cooking, if you wish. And another self-taught chef. That's right. It's interesting, in contrast to last week, where we were watching, going to all the cooking schools. Right. Uh, you've been to this yes, restaurant. Yes, I was in there. Maui. In fact, my husband and I were there for lunch on New Year's Eve. Wow. What, was it, what did it feel wonderful like? Wonderful food. Well, the, it's right off of Front Street in Maui, so mm -hmm. you don't really have a view of the water and the mountains, per se, from Avalon, because it, it's in a lovely little courtyard. Right. Um, you eat either outside or you can eat inside the restaurant. Very relaxed, airy, bright. Uh, the service was wonderful. The food was truly superb, as good as I've had anywhere. Mm. Um, and we really had a wonderful time. They took great care of us. Excellent, excellent food. Unfortunately, that day, they were really gearing up for New Year's Eve. Big night, yeah. Because they're very popular at night. So it was a little quiet when we were there at lunch. But as a result of that, we got to sample lots of things. And, and really, uh, I got to go in the kitchen and meet some of the cooks. And it was a great experience. Wonderful food, Bill. I was looking at the menu, because I hadn't had the privilege of being there. And I, it looked like they had a lot, good assortment of starters and a lot of wok and grill cooking, from what That's I could right. see by analyzing the menu. That's right. Well, of course, you, we're using a lot of tuna and a lot of fresh fish in Hawaiian cuisine now. And the wok and uh, cooking. It's certainly grilling also is the preferred method because it, it sears it in, keeps all the flavor, and the chefs are serving the fish pretty rare nowadays. Another thing that's great about this is that we'll visit the restaurant in just a second. It's a long-time dream of Mark and Judy Elman to own a restaurant in Hawaii. And so many times we visit these restaurants, they're really the dream come true for the owner yeah. proprietors. Well, they deserve it. They really deserve all the success because they do a great job here, and the food is fabulous. Good. I've been there myself. I can tell you firsthand. Let's go to Avalon in Maui. Back in the 70s, Chef Mark Elman had a rock and roll catering company in Los Angeles. But even as he was cooking over a hot stove for famous bands like the Moody Blues and the Beach Boys, he was dreaming of the sun and the surf and the sand on tropical beaches thousands of miles away. His dream came true with the 1985 opening of his own restaurant, Avalon, on the island of Maui. Tucked inside a courtyard under the silky night sky, Avalon radiates the spirit of the islands colorful paintings, a light bringer's wishing well, and lays made of fragrant blossoms add to the ambience. But it's the flavor of the islands that attracts Avalon's regulars. From humble beginnings, Chef Elman has invented a fresh approach to local ingredients and become one of the leaders of the Hawaiian regional cuisine movement. I've really been through the school of hard knocks as far as uh, my learning, learning from books and other chefs and eating out and reading magazines and uh, a lot of trial and error. His experiments resulted in a Pacific Rim fusion cuisine that is Thai, Japanese, European, and Californian influences. Here, ahi tuna is wrapped in basil, mint, and cilantro, then seared, and served with rice noodles and a carrot and ginger garnish. Whole fresh opaka paka, also known as Hawaiian snapper, is cross-hatched and wok fried then plated on wild and basmati rice and drenched in a spicy Thai sauce. And Avalon's signature dish is the tower of mashed potatoes and eggplant with a tomato caper coriander salsa, all topped with chili seared salmon. Swirls of plum vinaigrette finish the tiki-style masterpiece, which is worth the trouble it takes to eat. Avalon welcomes families, especially since Mark Elman's own wife and daughters are frequently in attendance. For those in the younger set with a sweet tooth, the caramel Miranda is bound to please. Elman has opened a second Avalon back on the mainland in Mill Valley, California. Bringing a taste of Hawaii to his old stomping grounds brings him full circle. As Elman says, paradise is meant to be shared. Oh, look at that Pretty, sunset. Eh? 
It's not what bad, What a way Bill. to finish a, a great meal with a sunset You've got to like get that. there. Mm. The, the food here is fantastic. Really good. Let me tell you a few of the things yep. that we had yeah. when we were here. Go. Had the Avalon Summer Rolls, which was delicious, with shrimp, avocado, rice noodle, and macadamia nut sauce. Now, is that like a, a Thai uh, roll? Yeah, it has Asian Thai, influences. Asian exactly. Influences you could there. say Vietnamese, Asian, mm -hmm. I mean, Thai, excuse what me. What else? I also had the Avalon Seared Sashimi, and of course, tuna is very, right. very popular in the Hawaiian Islands. Um, seared really beautifully and served with the ginger and coriander sauce, wonderful fish. And also the sashimi Hawaiian style, which was uh, with wasabi, soy, and pickled ginger. I love very that delicious. Wasabi. All that to start. And then also we had the wonderful opaka paka, as you see opaka, here, which paka. is a right. specialty of the house. What it's is a grilled fish. You can have it steamed or grilled. Uh, we had wonderful black beans with garlic with it, delicious. And for dessert, what you saw in the video, the ice cream with all that wonderful medley of fruit around it, we had that too. So here we see. Just according to what you had there, we got Hawaiian influences, Asian yes. influences, and California influences. That's right. Well, you at saw. least, yeah, one meal. That's right. The mashed potatoes that you saw there, and the eggplant, right. and the fish, that really configured in a contiki way, that definitely spoke to me of, of Pacific Rim cooking because it encapsulates all those influences. I heard that the chef will prepare anything mild medium or very That's spicy. Right. Any dish on the menu can That's be prepared right. a little more he, spicy. That's terrific. He does use a lot of chilies, Bill. He even had a little bit of chili in the dessert. And 13 okay. glasses of wine uh, by the glass. 13 different wines by the glass. I only had one, not 13, but it was very good. Well, if I had been there, I would have encouraged you to have a little more. The other more 12, there. right? The other 12, right? I would have been right behind you. The restaurant is Avalon. It's 844 Front Street, Lahana High. That's Maui, 808-667-5555. Five, nine. Open every day. Credit cards accepted. The average meal price is about $34. The chef recommends the opaka paka. That's in a garlic black bean sauce or chili seared salmon, tiki style, or the caramel Miranda. <laughs> well, up next, home on the range in Massachusetts. That's where we're going, and it's where the beef is king. Discover everything there is to know about food. Come and get it on the TV Food Network. You know you can get salmonella poisoning from bacteria in undercooked food, like some chicken or fish. But you can also get it if that bacteria has been spread around the kitchen. That's why there's Lysol, antibacterial kitchen cleaner. As it cleans, it kills the bacteria and keeps them from spreading, which may help keep you from getting sick. Get Lysol, antibacterial kitchen cleaner. Did you know that this had saccharin in it? I didn't know. I, I used to use this stuff, and I didn't know. A lot of people don't know, but there is a saccharin notice on the pink stuff. And then I found this other product, the Equal, and it didn't have saccharin in it. Equal tastes like natural sugar. You know, just stick your finger in it and then go like that. It really tastes good. Boy, you know, life has been so much sweeter since. So why, why choose anything else? I choose Equal. Hello, I'm Betty D, and I'd like to tell you what's coming up this week on The Essence of Emerald. Radicchio stuffed with goat cheese, lightly toasted and chopped pistachio nuts, as well as radicchio cups filled with sea scallops, pancetta, creole spice, and served with a warm vinaigrette. Then Emerald prepares portabella and barley risotto with ruby port, basil chiffonade, heavy cream, and parmesan cheese, all on a grill. Emerald's cooking every weeknight at 11.30. Hey, man. Want a taste of something to make you feel good? You feel love. Try it off. You don't know what you're missing. A little crack won't hurt you. It'll make me a crackhead. Won't cost you nothing. This one's on me. Absolutely free. I said no, man. Good job, son. That's just what you do if that ever happens. Okay, Dad. Deal with your kids. Tell them the truth about drugs. It could be the most important role you ever play. Like how you handled yourself. This is a drug problem. An order unfulfilled, a complaint unanswered, an opportunity missed. You see, drug users have almost double the absentee rate. That's the problem. Your problem. So pick up your phone and call for a free guide on how to set up a drug-free workplace. It's surprisingly simple. And it's one call that can help get more calls answered. Hi, welcome back. Well, with all the talk about the potential dangers of consuming too much fat, you'd think the modern steakhouse would be practically obsolete. 
Well, you'd be wrong, judging by the numbers of TV diners who still insist that a good night out means steak and potatoes, and plenty of them, too. Hilltop, a landmark steakhouse in Boston, shows no signs of lost customers due to cholesterol phobia. And I, I think you could say that again. My yeah. goodness, they serve 22,000 customers a week. I mean, that's 22, pretty amazing. 22,000 customers a week? 3,000 meals a day. Jeez. Yeah. It's, a, it's the third largest grossing restaurant in the United States. That's right. We're about to that's visit. right. You know, we've been looking at steakhouses all week. Here's a, a very thumbnail, literal thumbnail sketch of the history of steakhouses. Around 1711 in London, there was something called a Beef Steak Club. It's approximately the same time in Philadelphia at a place called the Tun Tavern, there was also a Beef Steak Club. By 1760, Beef steak houses were starting in cities around the country. This sounds so, kinky. What went on in, in these places, In the colonies, by, <laughs> by the 1760, each city had like a beef steak thing. Right. By um, 1880, steak houses in the United States are the single most popular form of places to dine. So it's been, it, it dates all the way back to a club in London in 1711. Interesting. And of course, in I think the year 1814, steak was first introduced to New York. And some of the best steaks come out of New York, or at least they're associated with New York. And we've got some of the older steakhouses in New York uh, as well. So this place is a huge operation. I mean, it, it's interesting to, to when you think of something that 22,000 customers a week, 3,000 meals a day. Wow. You have to have good meat to you know, have that sort of consistency and quality control. Yeah, to be the third largest grossing restaurant in the United huge. States. I'm interested in visiting this. I think Tavern de Green is number one. That's right. And there's a place in New Jersey that might be number the two. Manor, the Manor, we think, is number two. And this is number three. That alone makes it impressive, but I hear they have great steaks. So let's go to the Hilltop Steakhouse in Saugus, Massachusetts. It may be a long way from the prairie, but rain or shine, droves of customers mosey in for some old-fashioned plate cleaning at this venerable Western-style restaurant in suburban Boston. Beckoned by the towering cactus and plastic Herefords, Regulars keep returning to the Hilltop Steakhouse in Saugus, Massachusetts, where large portions, low prices, and friendly service drive a success story that averages 22,000 patiently waiting customers each week. A nostalgic throwback to 50s dining, the Hilltop thrives after years as one of the busiest restaurants in the region. Known for its attention to groups and families, the Hilltop regularly hosts families and groups for special occasions and regular weekly get-togethers. The restaurant's sheer size can be daunting, especially on a busy night when the kitchen churns out 3,000 or more meals, and sometimes the place looks more like the Kansas City train depot than a steakhouse. Number 39, 75, 37, number 9, number 55 for Kansas City. Customers stream through the doors on their way to dining rooms named for famous and infamous frontier towns like Carson City, Santa Fe, and Virginia City. But comfortable booths and friendly faces keep them coming back. Filled with scenes and mementos evoking the bygone days of the Old West, the hilltop emphasizes something else often found in short supply, value. Few contemporary restaurants serve portions this large at such bargain rates. And while the menu includes chicken and seafood dishes, beef and plenty of it is king round these parts bar night. The beef is, a, of course, is our mainstay here, and everybody's talking about, well, people are cutting back, they're not eating red meat. Well, you can't judge by our place. So, beef it is. 160,000 pounds each week of succulent prime rib, tender filet mignon, juicy tenderloin tips. Beef is so popular here that the Hilltop operates a butcher shop on premises for those hardcore carnivores who can't get enough of their Colorado-raised steak. The roast chicken, swordfish steak, and broiled or fried shrimp are favorites too, as is the house specialty, lobster pie. More than 14 ounces of meat from two boiled crustaceans is basted with butter, mounded with seasoned breadcrumbs and broiled. Even the salads are huge here, and the kitchen prepares them cart by towering cart. So don't tell these little doggies they haven't found a home on this New England roadside range, even though the skies often do get cloudy all day. Love those cows. You know, as I, look, as I looked at this video and considering the number of meals they turn out per day, I think you'd be safest to order. I don't mean safe in terms of danger, but I think the quality smartest. here. Smartest. Smartest. Yeah. That's right, Nina. Yeah. The quality here would be, in my opinion, would be in the straight ahead cuts of beef. Definitely. Because they, they're turning over so much of it, it's got to be fresh. Gotta they, have be a good. Good, they, have, they have a good supplier for it, whereas the other stuff is really mass produced. So I think you're, you're smarter to go right. with the beef. Now, when I eat steak, I love to have it heavily charcoaled on the outside. And to me, that really constitutes part of the flavor and 
part of the deal of eating steak. Do you like? You said you like filet mignon, which usually isn't. It, it usually isn't like that. But if I if I'm ordering a, a sirloin, which I, a sirloin steak is really the thing I'm told to judge a steakhouse by. There you go. That's what I, that's what I've heard. But I, I like the same thing because I like the difference in the texture between the soft. Because I take mine medium right. rare. There's one thing, other thing I learned this week about steakhouses. The real, not like the Hilltop, but the really upscale steakhouses. Like Morton's. Like, like say, Morton's or Sparks. Or, or Sparks sometimes don't have a burger or, ch or chopped sirloin on the menu. Why is that? So I investigated this, and I found out that the reason is that it draws the customer, even though it's a high-profit item for them, it draws the customers away from the stuff they really want to serve. They end up serving too much I chopped see. sirloin. So I look at the menu and say, well, I won't have filet. They'll kind of rationalize their way into a chopped sirloin. Those burgers, it's hard to get away that's from exactly them. That's exactly right. So that's why you won't see chopped sirloin on some Right. Really good steakhouse. Well, menus. you know, of course, when you're eating steak, you do have a wide range of choice between the, something like a filet mignon that's yeah. rich, but not fat, not a lot of fat, and then maybe another cut of steak where the fat is important because the fat is really what gives it that great flavor. And you notice that by the marbling. The marbling. Exactly, it's, it's, the marbling in the meat. It's true. I remember when I was really in my big steak years, I used to get whole filets from the butcher at the Reading Terminal Market, the whole filet, and cut it myself. And I used to like great. to do them that thick. And it's great to cut them when they're really ice cold. And this way you, you can get the finest cut you want. And not freeze it if possible. Well, we hope you like our ideas about steakhouses. And if you want to try one in the Saugus, Massachusetts area, try the Hilltop Steakhouse. They're at 885 Broadway in Saugus. And they're at 617-233-7700. Open every day and credit cards are accepted. The average price of a meal here is very reasonable for steak at $17. We recommend the King Cut Prime Rib, which is one pound of slow roasted prime rib, or maybe the large sirloin steak that Bill was talking about. And for dessert, the Hilltop Lobster Pie. No, it's not a dessert. With special buttered breadcrumbs. You could eat it for dessert, but you'd have to be nuts. <laughs> well, tomorrow on TV Diners, we'll show you where Washington's movers and shakers go for some intimate atmosphere and great Alsatian food. And we'll get a taste of Colorado's regional cooking at Pinions, as well as traveling back in time to the 50s for a great steak dinner at Brennan's, Brenner's in Houston. Hot stuff coming through next. Taste. David Rosengarten shows that life is just a matter of taste. Then cooking classics with Julia Child, the grand dame of American cooking. So come and get it only on the TV Food Network. Uh, I'm not going in. <laughs> oh, I'm on my deathbed here. Why not take Dayquil? But my head is pounding. <laughs> and I can't stop coughing. Take Dayquil. And won't this stuff fix all that? No, that won't do anything for your headache or your cough. Take the Dayquil. From the makers of NyQuil, Vicks Dayquil Liquid Caps complete non-drowsy cold relief. Don't you hate it when she's right? Vicks Dayquil Liquid Caps, the non-drowsy stuffy head congested chest, sore throat, coughing fever, so you can face your day medicine. Also try new Dayquil sinus formulas. Ever run into the kind of stubborn dirt that literally brings you to your knees? Now you can stop all that scrubbing. Introducing Ultra Mr. Clean. So powerful, just one little capful beats twice as much of this regular cleaner. And while they struggle with greasy dirt, Ultra Mr. Clean works so much better. He helps you up off your knees and still cleans to the shine. Try new Ultra Mr. Clean in Lemon, Pine, or Mountain Falls and Mr. Clean it to the Ultra Shine. Sometimes the road to life can be a bumpy one. And along the way, you gotta take your knocks. That's why there's Corel. Its beauty enlivens even the simplest meal, while its durability ensures it'll be around for many meals to come, no matter where the road may lead you. Beautifully durable Corel, designed for living. And now Corel dinnerware has drinkware to match. Mystic Music presents Cool Rock. I ain't missing you at all. Missing you. Oh, 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 one more day. I just died on your arms tonight. The songs are hot, but the rock is cool. I guess the rain's down in Africa. With Cool Rock, you get two cassettes or two CDs with all your favorite hits from the 80s and 90s. It must have been love, but it's all now. Now I'm your 
Rock remembers the special times. to get this great collection of cool rock. Cool Rock contains 35 chart toppers for only $19.95 for cassettes or $24.95 for CDs. Here's how to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-509-5757. That's 1-800-509-5757. Or send $19.95 for two cassettes or $24.95 for two CDs, plus $4.50 shipping and handling to Cool Rock, P.O. Box 4956, Omaha, Nebraska. Or call 1-800-509-5757. Hey, don't forget, we're here every weeknight with America's Greatest Restaurants. From big-time, four-star dining spots to down-home places. Every weeknight, we show you where to eat and what to order. TV Diners, every night at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific Time.